you know, that's the way you learn stuff, right? You could learn stuff for free 99 or you could pay for organization. And so as a course creator myself, I liked, you know, being able to have everything organized and have everything in a, a methodical way that I could kind of learn, that I, that I can learn it, but then also I can teach it. Okay, cool. So today we are talking about courses. <laughs> um, what has been your experience of uh, like cr courses that creators have uh, created? Let's start there. I mean, obviously we're all uh, I've all got some ideas for courses spinning around, but like, what's your sort of overall thought on integrating courses as a content creator and how other people have uh, have done that? To what degree of success? Well, it's super hot right now. If if you can go more than three steps on the internet without getting hit by a content creator's course, I'm wondering just exactly what rock you're living under. It's everybody is realizing that this has been one of the most uh, reliable ways that content creators from every kind of walk can bring in some revenue, can share what they're teaching, especially when they're on any kind of even if they're edutainers, uh, but really as an educator, it's just a great way to be able to actually monetize what it is that you're doing in whatever respect. So um, I think it's it, it's interesting, though, because it feels like we're almost getting to a saturation point. Have you guys felt that where you're like, oh, my gosh, one more course, but now I have to make, you know, five of my own? Right. That, I feel a lot of pressure to make courses that, instead of just sign up for them. People want me to make one. And I, I right. Taking whatever expertise that you have and then monetizing it is just kind of that knee jerk reaction to whatever it is. And I think that, you know, you were joking about it a second ago, Keely, but if you're just on Twitter for half a second, uh, every chat GPT, every AI bro is out there trying to sell a course for $3, $9, $99, whatever, to teach you whatever you need to do to know about something that has basically been around. Let's just, you know, argue that chat GPT has really only been around for two months. Let's just for that, for that purpose. But now everybody wants to tell you how to use it as if they're the expert. Now I've taken Rob Lennon's course. The key about Rob Lennon's course is he's a writer to begin with. And he comes at it from uh, a writing, air, you know, uh, foresight into this. And, and he's talking to you as a writer, what as a writer you need to do. But he's not, he gets to the point where he describes what you need to do in chat GPT. But he's at least getting you in the mindset of being a writer what this is as a tool, specifically a tool, and how you use this tool in your writing process and breaking down and asking it the questions that you need. So that was fine, but there's just been too many people that have, you know, offered a course for either just your email address or, you know, some some sort of gumroad thing where you pay you what you want, and then you get into it and you find out that it's links from like somebody else's page or it's, you know, something it's, it's just a whole list of tweets that somebody had put up. And so they, they're, they're not teaching you anything. They're curating something for you. So, you know, there's, there is this, you know, it's not that I haven't felt burned before in taking a course. I, you know, I've taken some really good courses, but you know, you have to tread lightly right now because it's a little snake oil salesman ish right now on the internet as, as to who is the expert, who has the actual knowledge to, to give your money if you choose to do so to take that course. Because too many times, you know, people are just out there reselling or reselling or reselling something and you're going to get screwed. Well, as a new entrepreneur, sometimes you know, that's the way you learn stuff, right? You could learn stuff for free 99 or you could pay for organization. And so as a course creator myself, I liked, you know, being able to have everything organized and have everything in a, a methodical way that I could kind of learn, that I, that I can learn it, but then also I can teach it. So, you know, 
I know that there's a lot of stuff out there. And I think as content creators, we can use that particular platform to kind of help us monetize not only that, but then also to really show your expertise in whatever it is that you're talking about. And it'd be pretty quick, you know, it'd be pretty easy to figure out whether, you know, it's bullshit or not. You know, like you just mentioned, Rob, you know, you you buy a course and it's like, oh, wow, it's a bunch of retweets and all this other stuff. But it's a really good way to sort of like measure your knowledge or it's like have, you know, somebody else measure your knowledge by seeing, oh, OK, this is how this is how they set it up or whatever. I don't know. I guess maybe I'm coming coming at it as, you know, from a educator standpoint, you know, I just know anytime I took a course, there were objectives, there was homework, there was writing material. It might have been video, but, you know, right now we're in the age, we're in that video age where everybody wants to see a video. But I, I come from a different background when it comes to like that kind of stuff. So I want to learn something and I want it to be like at the end of this course, what the hell did I learn? So, you know, that's kind of where I come from, you know, with, with that. But it's just, you know, one of those things where it's like, oh, OK, it'll be pretty evident very quickly, if you know what the hell you're talking about. I think that to Rob's point about uh, chat GPT, there is, and linking in with the saturation aspect, definitely for all of the, the AI stuff, there's there's saturation now. And a lot of people have not really got the, uh, uh, you know, the, the background to really justify, you know, them making a whole course on something that's literally just so new. Uh, and there's definitely a lot of people jumping on it. In terms of saturation in the, the rest of the, you know, outside of, chat gpt and ai um i wonder if we perhaps perceive saturation just because it's something that we talk about so much in our little group and you know in the content creation circles that we're always looking at people who are making courses whereas in actual fact because we're all you know individuals there's people doing the same kind of channel as me for example that have probably got their own courses as well um but that does give people the opportunity to uh see your teaching style and then decide whether they want to buy a course from you so it could be that you know every person doing a channel like mine, for example, uh, they might all have their courses, but people are, are just going to gravitate towards one or the other, um, having had that time to get to know and, you know, the, the classic no like and trust sort of thing. Um, but I think that that is why it does work so well for uh, especially YouTube content creators where, or, you know, I suppose any format where people are getting to understand your personality and your, uh, the way that you go about things. It is just a natural fit to then have that that course to monetize things and it's it's totally true as well michelle about the whole thing of um you know information is free but people pay for the organization and having that sort of structured approach to it um so in terms of like thinking about creating courses yourself i mean i've uh, done a few i've got a few more you know on the, in the pipeline as well um what's been the sort of course material that you know you've thought about creating or have created so uh, perhaps keely with, with you first i know that you've got a few different things ongoing Oh, wow. So many. Um, I actually just finished a course that has been an absolute albatross around my neck for a couple months. One of those frogs that I just refused to eat for the longest time. So I had done a, uh, it's a certification course for basically our entry level. So a level one sort of indoor certification for FH umpires. And I had, to, it's a six hour course in person that I delivered and this time when I delivered it, and I've, I've been doing this course for 17 years, so I, I kind of know the material pretty darn well. Obviously, it updates when the rules update and techniques update, blah, blah, blah. But I, I know the, the, the sequence, the format, I've been fine tuning it. But when I delivered it this time, I did so in such a way that I was consciously thinking, I'm going to talk through this much more segmented so that I can easily repurpose this. <laughs> And I can then edit it into an asynchronous version because there's a lot of people that can't spend three hours on two consecutive nights learning how to umpire indoor hockey. So I just finished editing that six hours into 70 units of material <laughs> and, uh, and, and taking that and being able to transcribe it add the subtitles to the actual videos, uh, a few little quizzes and exercises throughout and that sort of thing. And that turned out to be, I sh now that I've eaten that frog, I'm like, ah, actually it wasn't that bad. 
I did it all into script and used the the new storyboard feature to create scenes. So each unit ended up being a scene. What I realized is I'd really love for Descript to have a feature where you say, you click on a scene and say, please export this scene to a composition, a new composition. They don't do that yet. Because I took each composition and that was the unit and I exported the video, the transcript, subtitles for each of those things. So that was my process of doing that. But because that material was so well known to me, I had the outline. I had whatever evocative, non-wordy, as I learned from Rob in the last episode about presentations, making sure that my slides were very, very image rich, word sparse. And then of course I use a ton of video in mine, video examples and working through those clips is a big element of the way I teach. And that ended up being my 70 unit, six hour, vastly underpaid certification course. So that's just one of the ways that I've been making courses. And now that I know the system, it's going to be so much easier. But the first time you do it is always the hardest for sure. Keely, is that something that is used by the governing body of the field hockey people in the, on the planet? Or is it something certified by you? That's a funny story. So I, it, it, there's just been some uh, weird sporting body power struggles when it comes to this. So this, this has been the course that I've done inside our city league, of which I'm, I, I actually just stepped down as a board member for it. But um, we're using it inside because when it comes to the indoor format of the sport, it's not fully accepted. There have been discussions and arguments. I, I just, I don't know what the problem is. But what I've done is I've offered this. This is the, the courses that I use for certification within my area. I'm offering as sort of a bedrock. Do you want to know how to learn how to umpire hockey at the level one, level two, level three area? My way, <laughs> basically. And then I'm going to be, you know, trying to invite national associations, regional associations to say, here's a curriculum. It's really good. Maybe you should just take this and pay me for it and deliver it to your people. Wouldn't that be easy? So it's kind of, I've, I'm trying to create my own demand in that respect in order to scale this because it's not scalable just to sell it to my local people. But that's just one of the weirdness of my little niche there in, in the umpiring stuff. And how about you, Michelle? Perhaps you can talk a little bit about the courses that you've been doing and like the structure of them and how you find found getting into to that. Huh. Keely, you're right about doing that. You know, once you do the first one, it's like, oh, wow, okay. It was hard to birth <laughs> the corners and everything, you know, it hurt. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, I have been building my course library and I actually made my very, very first course. I did it on, I did it on a WordPress site and I actually paid somebody to do it because, you know, it was like Greek to me, but, um, but I, I had the outline. I had uh, all of the things, all of the graphical uh, pieces. I'm one of those people who uh, I want to make everything like way ahead of time and then kind of put it all, to, you know, make all the pieces and then put all the things together. And so I had the outline, I, I had like video, I had, you know, all the graphics, all the things already done. And then I handed my files to someone, my very first course, I handed my files to someone in Poland um, who put everything nicely together. It's beautiful chef's kiss. But um, I think I sold maybe one. <laughs> I was like, okay, wait a minute. All right, maybe we need to go back to the drawing board with this. And so um, the second course that I built uh, did in Kajabi and because everybody everybody named Mama was talking about Kajabi. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll bite. And so I did. And so I kind of did some of the same things, made sure I had my outline, made sure I had all the graphical pieces and all that, but I put it together. <laughs> and the very first one that I put together, Lord, I'm telling you, but it was great when it was done. You know, uh, I, I I wrote a book first and that was my outline. So my outline was the book. And then I got into like all the pieces and started to break it up and and, and do all the things. And, you know, I, 
I was able to sell it. So I know it converts. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, And then after that, I'm like, all right, this is a template. But now um, I have to, you know, I had some critiques with that particular one. And, uh, you know, some of the critiques were, okay, well, maybe not such so text heavy, but I guess that's kind of like the, the the types of courses that I've consumed in the past were very text heavy because like my, my textbooks are this thick. Okay. And so I'm so used to that. And so I'm like, well, not everybody else is used to that because everybody's got like the attention span of a gnat. So, you know, maybe I might want to like make it thin it out a little bit. So, um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm, wrestling with myself <laughs> with how much information is too much information and, and trying to figure out, okay, well, can I do something that is uh, a little thinned out? Will it convert as well as, you know, something that's text rich, you know? And so I don't know, it's, it's just, it's a work in progress, but the fact that I made the first one made the second one easier to make. So I'm redoing that first course that I um, that I handed off to someone in Poland and I'm, you know, taking, pull, taking the reins and trying to like, you know, see what that looks like. So, but I've made other little mini courses, which were, which were kind of cute. You know, it was kind of easy to do because I was, I had a template. And so now it's easy to like recreate because I got a template. So, um, so yeah, um, I've been, I've been enjoying it. And now it's like, oh, I can make a course about this. Oh, I can make a course about that. And so I can see how, you know, this is how things kind of get to turn and, and how, you know, how one course begets another. So it's, it's been a lot of fun for me. Um, but at the same time, uh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> I'm, 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 it's a lot of work. You said something there about the, um, like, albeit the, the amount of text, whether it's text or video, but, you know, whether it's too much information for people to take in. And I have that a little bit with the masterclasses that I do, because I always think a masterclass should be, you come in as a complete novice, knowing nothing, and you leave knowing, you know, everything there is to know about that, you know, whatever it is that the course is about. So a real masterclass, a lot of people just use the word masterclass, and it's like five lessons about something or other. But the other side of that is sometimes people come in and think, Oh, there's a lot of uh, lot of videos here to go through. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing is making beginner's guides as well. A lot of people say, I've, I've signed up for your course. I've seen, you know, I've watched a load of the, the, the course content, but I just want you to tell me like, and people will come on a consultation call and say, I just want you to tell me like in concise steps, like how do I do this particular thing? And so I'll be making beginner's guides for all these as well, because some people don't actually want a masterclass. They just want to you know, hit the ground running sort of thing with uh, with some information. So I, I found that as well in terms of the, the size of the course. Would you be writing more books or like? I, I, I am going to be doing books, but the, specifically the video courses. So for example, the Ecamm Live Masterclass, I'm going to do an Ecamm Live Beginner's Guide, which is kind of like a tour of the interface, roughly how it works, you know, and, you, you know, to how to get up and running basically with it without going into every single detail that I do in the, the Masterclass. So just giving like a, a slimmed down version as a, as an alternative to that as well. Um, but how, how about you, uh, Rob? Have you uh, looked into the uh, the idea of courses and, and what would those be on creating courses? Branding for, for medical practices specifically is what I would lean toward. And then uh, my main uh, expertise is in, in telemedicine. So it would be teaching... Uh, physicians, what it'd be like to set up their own telemedicine uh, group. And that to a certain, not to get too nerdy. And there is a difference between telemedicine and telehealth. We hear these two terms a lot. Telemedicine is a, uh, is B2B where telehealth is B2C where the, you know, it's physician to consumer. So I'm uh, my expertise is helping doctors set up uh, medical practices that service entities not patients, so a hospital, a clinic, uh, an insurance company, something to that that end. So, my, you know, maybe mine is not quite as niche as Keeley's uh, teaching. You know, uh, hockey. What type of hockey is it? Again? Indoor field hockey. Um, you gonna yeah. get a stick but, right up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poking, keep poking the bear. You gonna get a stick right when you don't want it. <laughs> you know, it's just not funny, Rob. When you when you when you want to be cute, it's just it's just not funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, 
Yes, Grandpa. Uh, so, yeah, I you know I, I would say that yeah, targeting physicians, practice managers, uh, marketing directors of of medical groups is is who I would initially target, and it would be along two lines. And as I said in the last in the last uh, uh, podcast, is that you know I can go the direction of teaching what my strength is, and that's telemedicine and helping people set it up. Right now. There's an abundance of teleradiology groups, but you know, telecardiology, telepathology, teledermatology, they're still kind of wandering out in the wilderness and they need somebody to help them focus and monetize what they're doing. But, you know, as I was talking about practice marketing, I thought on a larger end, there's, you know, hundreds of thousands of you know, of medical practices in the United States trying to get patients to their doors and that might be a little bit more uh, uh, accessible to a larger crowd than the niche that I am in. And, and how about you, Rob? You, uh, Rich, rather, you mentioned that you'd felt almost like the pressure to create courses, um, maybe from me where yeah, I was there like, is because in, 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 my little, <laughs> in my little world, I don't know everything there is to know. And, and I don't mm -hmm. know if I could create a master class that has every possible scenario. And I just don't. So I'm thinking I'm going to do comedy defensive driving. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> the thing, but the thing about that is, you speaking don't of unfunny create, things, yes, you don't necessarily have to create a masterclass. You know, it, and, and specifically the course that I've kept talking to you about is this whole thing of a VA, and we talked about it in the VA episode as well. If you've done something that somebody else hasn't been on that path before, and you've got some experience to bring to the table, that can add value. It doesn't have to be like absolutely everything you need to know about everything there is you know little micro courses you can do around well i was actually i wasn't talking about the va thing that's a whole nother thing but i, I was just talking mm -hmm. about doing the doing the swag and merch thing and i've heard mm -hmm. different people talk about different different levels of whether you go to spread shop or whether you buy from a t-shirt printer or whatever and i mean there's different there's pros and cons for all kinds of stuff like that and and i could possibly come up with something logical for that but i just i, I, I don't know i just don't really have the confidence to put and maybe i just need the outline Maybe I need to sit down and just come up with an outline. I, I have sat down and tried to come up with something, and it's it just goes so many different directions. I could be an, an art guy. I could be a sales guy. I could be how do you set the business up? Do you hire people? Do you do you, how much do you farm out and all that kind of stuff? There's just there's there's a whole lot of questions, and so like what you guys said. I mean, maybe it's just making videos and just organizing it into a course. I don't know. I just haven't got that far. One of the things that uh, Tom Buck did in his, he did a final cut um, course. Now I haven't done it because you know, I'm the no edit guy, but um, we, he did share the course outline and I really loved his positioning of it because he said, you know, people have been asking me to do a course on final cut and how to edit videos. And he said, final cut is such a, you know, a large program with so many capabilities. I can't possibly cover all of those in uh, a course because I just don't have the knowledge of every single aspect of it. Um, however, what I can do is I can tell you exactly the way that I use it in my workflow to create my videos for my uh, for my, my channel. That's what that's what his value proposition was. And that's the course that he's made. So there is something there to say it's not going to, you know, literally saying from the outset, this isn't going to cover absolutely everything. This is just the way that I do it. And if you want to learn from me, you like my videos and you, you want to see the way that I do it using this software, uh, then here it is in this course. And the course is, I think, it, it might be, I, I might be getting this wrong, about 15 to 20 lessons or something like that. I, I seem to recall right. it. I've, I've actually, I, I paid for it and I have it and, and I have his podcasting course too. And I think um, I enjoy Tom's content. I might not have used my knowledge. I've completed the podcasting one. I'm about two thirds of the way through the uh, Final Cut Pro one, but Tom always delivers good content. He's, uh, easy to listen to, easy to understand. And, um, I, you know, and I always walk away learning something from him, be it in one of his courses or one of his videos. Um, there's an Adobe audition video that he did probably two years ago where he teaches you how to take uh, a sound clip music and use audition to either make it longer or make it shorter using the internal workings of, of audition. And I've gone back to that video. I don't know how many times because he, you know, I've, I, I, I pretty much know how to do it now, but just the fact that he gets in there, shows you what you need to do and, and why, and you can walk away with that knowledge. He's helped me 
produce some stuff over time and just on a YouTube video. So when when you do something like that, when you give content, when you give value uh, on your YouTube channel, then when it comes to walking in and saying, am I going to spend money on uh, a course like that, it's easy to, to give up the dollars. And Rich, I think for me, I'm going to really be vulnerable here and just share that I think the biggest mistake that I've made with courses and if it weren't for the fact that this thing that I just did, the 70 unit one was required basically for me to contribute to my home, uh, community here, I never should have done it because it's so much work to try to do one big comprehensive course. And actually that's not what people are asking me for. The, what, the course that I've done the best with is one that's just about positioning. And it's I'm, I'm just looking at it right now. It is uh, 20 units long, and I sell it for $37. And it's the one thing that, I, that people keep asking me about. Why do you keep talking about positioning? It's the most important thing. Like, why? Tell me more about it. I want to learn how to do this. Nobody else is doing this. And it's that continual feedback from people that this is the thing they want to learn from me. I made a small course and I've done way better with that than I've done with any big masterclass or anything like that. So maybe it's not about trying to be an expert of all the things. It's the, what is the one question that people are asking you for? Make a tiny little thing about it and then put it out there and see how it does. And then you build from there. Maybe. Yeah, I know the bite-sized stuff as that I participated in as a customer, as a student, is is awesome. If I can get through something in three to five minutes and get the gist, it's fantastic. And if I can get through whatever, 20 or 30 modules or whatever it is in, in half a day or in a day, uh, if I put the time aside, it's, it's a lot better. It's like eating the frog, like you said. I mean, if, if I'm going to sit there and take a course – like Pat Flynn's got one called Heroic Courses on how to build courses. I went through the first four of those. It's just, there's a lot of material. And I just look at that. And it's like a wall of stuff to go through. And I just haven't, mm -hmm. I haven't, I need to set the time aside and do it. And, but of course there's, you know, life and things. Yeah. Happen. Yeah. But at the same this. time, it's kind of like, you know, Rob going back to the Rob Lennon course, which, you know, I think, I think I share that with all of you and went, oh my God, this is so great. It's a really small course. It's very, like the units are small, it's easily digestible. And even though I was a little bit kind of wary of the material, let's put it that way, I don't use the O word, but I, I found myself getting excited because I felt like I was winning because I was able to get through the stuff because it was so nice and small and easy to get through. And, oh, I can do this practical thing. And, oh, I get to do a new practical thing in the very next one. And it was just a very rewarding experience. I, my, my own sort of thought as we're talking aloud is I need to be a lot better at employing these ideas that I've, th these realizations I've come to as a course consumer to the way that I put out my own courses. Why am I being such an idiot and doing these big long things that are going to intimidate people and they're not going to they're not going to even start them because they're like oh my god 70 units if they don't have to they're not going to do it but they will do a 20 20 unit course on positioning you know that kind of thing so really really interesting how we're we're teasing out these ideas i created uh, some other like small things that i'm using as lead magnets so i have like the you know, the outlines and different things or, or like little workbooks and and um, 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 little guides and things like that. And then I created a video series to kind of go around it, which essentially is a course, really. Um, but I did it for free on the Internet. And so, uh, you know, I guess, you know, having this conversation with you guys, because, I you know, I just recently this whole month I've been going over things that I've made that are to me, uh, rudimentary for people learning how to, you know, put them, put themselves out there and, and brand themselves. And I created these, these different little guides and diff different things that I'm using as lead magnets. But I, in the past already created like, um, you know, like, like the videos to go with it. And we kind of worked through the guide for, you know, we, and we did all of this stuff for free. And so now I'm like, you know what, I don't know if I should package that and make it a little mini course for those who are looking for it. So, you, you know, 
you know how the, the YouTube algorithm just kind of feeds you, you know, you look at one thing and then it feeds you some other stuff, but you have to look all over the place to find it. So, you know, like we were talking about before, how people pay for organization, I don't know, how feasible would it be if it's something that I've already done for free to package it up and for it to be, you know, like a little mini course that's like, I don't know, $27 or something like that. I've seen so courses that they can like kind that. of go through that. I've seen courses where they take stuff that they published before and they even forgot to market public or whatever. So they, so you get to the, you go through it and you're about three modules in and one of them is a private video and you can't see it because they forgot to, um, whatever, to make it public. It was, right. There's, anyway. there's another there's thing that I've been it. noticing lately. There's a way to do it. I've been, you know, I, I get in these realms where Facebook targets me for something and it's gen of late it's been these university sponsored mini courses or mini degrees or something from you know Northwestern or uh, Harvard or something like that where you pay two three four thousand dollars for a mini MBA or a mini marketing degree from the University of you know Salalumpi or something like that and and you get a, the second you click on one of these things, then Facebook knows that you're interested. And then everything from that point on is in your Facebook feed or advertisements for it. But when you go into it and you look into it and I'm, and I'm thinking of purchasing one from the university of Arizona. And if anybody knows me knows, uh, uh, my love of Tucson and I'm being sarcastic here, but, um, they have a course. And, but the thing that I see us, in. I, I look at the people that are presenting it and I notice that they aren't necessarily professors. You're not, you're not getting somebody always on staff. It might be led by somebody on staff, but then you get three or four or five people that are non educators that are coming in there. They're area experts. They're, they're topic, uh, you know, Kings on something. And then they come in and they teach it, but they're not you know, licensed or certified instructors anywhere. And the, the university is selling it through this third party application. Now I, I mention this just for the fact of why not us? You know, if, 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 you know, if Michelle on branding and positioning, you know, can look into finding somebody, uh, some university that might be selling it through this larger third party aggregator and say, hey, I'm an expert at this. This is what I do. And then they can be on the three or four person panel for this six or eight or 12 week course that they're selling for three or five or $10,000. And I get a cut of whatever person that comes in through the door to teach my things. That's another venue for us. We don't necessarily have to be the person that gets the Kajabi uh, things, you know, and all the content. You can just show up and let somebody else host and you just be the expert and you get paid for it. It just depends on how you want to walk in and sell yourself and sell your skills and knowledge. You, you know, it's, it's a different way of looking at it. How have you found the, the difference between a cohort based course and a sort of asynchronous, you know, learn at your own pace course? Personally, um, all of mine so far have been the, you know, learn at your own pace online type affair, but I am going to be doing some cohort courses. But one thing we mentioned about, you know, people not starting courses, if I just I just loaded up the stats for uh, for one of my courses and it's still, you know, over half of the people have barely even touched the course because they've signed up for it. Maybe it was on a special offer or something like that. Uh, and then once they know that they can learn any time in the future, it's easy to put those things off. So what's been your experience of, you know, cohort, you know, learning with a group of other people versus the uh, the ones that you learn at your own pace? Well, with, with my courses, uh, with the, the, the smaller sort of, not workshop style, but with the, with the bite-sized subject area things, what I haven't done is created a, a cohort, but I have created areas on my Discord server where people can come and discuss precisely just what is coming out of that course and the issues there, share their, their homework, which are, you know, videos of them trying to employ the skills that I've taught in the course and that sort of thing. And, and that's created a more of a positive, I think that's had a, an impact on the number of people who've actually progressed through the course. Um, I, I don't think that 
again, that those numbers would be as high as if it were a timed cohort thing. Uh, so for example, when I'm, I'm helping teach in Lori Petrucci's, uh, accelerator program, and it is very much a timed cohort course. So in this week, these videos need to be watched. We talk about these things. We have the homework for those particular videos and it's, and it's very much there. But even then the completion rates are still not where you would think they would be. You know, it's, it's, it's surprising how many of us sign up for these courses and don't actually do the work, even when we're put with a bunch of our peers and have time limits on when we're supposed to be working through the stuff, even though we all know how much more we're going to get out of the experience if we actually do the work. It's, it's just amazing. It's one of the grand paradoxes of humanity, I think. It's interesting. Uh, I've been in, you know, I've taken different courses and, and been in different masterminds. And yeah, you're right. It, I think it's a marketing, it's marketing genius, actually, because you continue to pay to be a part of all of these different things. And you're like going around and around and around the mountain until, you know, <laughs> at your own pace until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then you actually pick up the pace and actually do what you got to do. Um, you know, having been, have, having been, uh, you know, uh, a partaker, you know, you know, of, of said situation. So like one of my very first mentors, cause I was a part of her mentoring group. I was, a I was in her group for four years and, you know, she, she ta we taught the same stuff. It's kind of like what you were doing, what you're doing with Loria, you know, and, um, you know, they're different things that you had to do. And I was taking my sweet time, but then I was like, oh, okay, it's been four years. I need to be a little bit further along than where I am right now. And and then, you know, I kept trying to figure out, okay, well, maybe, maybe it's not, it's me. <laughs> I need to get my shit together. And so, yeah, eventually I did. So, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting. It's, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you would think that people would, because they're spending their money, you know, if, if, if people spend money on it, it's like, okay, well, you know, they'll take it a little bit more seriously, but then you still have like all the other limiting beliefs and all the other stuff that, you know, life and all the other stuff that's going on uh, where you, you find it easier to say, okay, well, I'll, I'll just put this aside because I have this and this and this going on in my life. But you know, as the actual proprietor of said course, it's very frustrating because you're like, oh, come on, you paid for this. Come on. Don't you want to get this knowledge? Don't you want to move forward? But at the same time, it's like, well, that's OK. You can stick around and you could pay for another year and be here for another year, especially if it's a high ticket thing like the one that I was with, that I was in. So, you know, I could see both sides of the, of the coin there. Um and then, you know, it's human nature for people to, you know, give themselves, you know, let themselves off the hook. But at the same, at, 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 but as a teacher, you're frustrated <laughs> because you're like, come on, get it together. So, I mean, I could see both sides. That, that sort of links into pricing as well, though. So if you're on something where you're paying on a subscription basis, um, then yeah, the, 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 you know, the meat is ticking as it were. Uh, whereas my courses that I've got at the moment are all sort of one-off payments. Uh, I am switching to <clears throat> not switching, but giving an, an option for a subscription model that gives access to all of the courses. But, um, th you know, that is part of the reason for that is to incentivize people to, uh, to do it, but also give them access to more courses than they would have necessarily had, you know, just paying for them individually. Um, but yeah, what, what about everyone else? What's your experience of the, uh, the the pricing, but also the the cohort things, Rich and, and Rob? What, what have you found, found with that in your experience of taking these courses? Which do you prefer, like with other people or learning at your own pace? Learning at my own pace. I'm ADD and um, I can, you know, I can rip through a section in, you know, an hour or that same section, you know, two days later could take me forever. And I think, you know, uh, that's the important pa part is that you need to be able to learn at your own pace. Uh, cohorts, I've tried cohorts for like a Lori P Petrucci uh, gig a couple of years back, and I still communicate with those people. I like those guys a lot. 
Um, and they matched us up okay, except for the fact like one of us was in California, the other one lived outside of London. So meeting was challenging uh, and getting together because, you know, that's the that's the big problem with a cohort is you've got to have your schedule match. Uh, and that's not always easy. So, th- you know, in that case, I met some good people that have been helpful and I've kept in contact with over time. But as to learning things through that course, I pretty much had to do it on my own. And I just, uh, from that point on, I, I will continue to do it. As for paying for it, um, you know, I, I if it's a course that I really want to take, if it's a course from a person who's a creator that I value, then I'm going to pay for I'm going to pay them for it. I've been offered chances from time to time to take a course for free. And if I give them something, if they're asking me to do something for them in return, uh, provide them some sort of feedback or whatever, that's one thing. But if I'm really coming in and, and, and I'm using it for my own benefit, I'll pay for it. And I think that's important And how much I pay for it. Well, we can, pricing can be a whole nother discussion for another day of what, what it is. But I think, uh, the one thing I've always, you know, I don't mind paying Tom Buck for his time. Uh, you know, he's always delivered for me. So if he's asking for 99 or $199, he's going to get it from me. I know that not everybody can afford that, but, um, I walk away a much, uh, uh more enhanced, uh, individual once I hear from the people that I believe are, uh, the creators in my space that, that I can learn from. And so I'm, I'm willing to, plunk down the money and, and not think about it. I like cohorts. I like, I like being accountable. I like having to do something by a certain day to stay caught up. So I'm all for it. Um, I, I do the soft pay stuff, but, but I'm much more, I'm much more likely to do it. If I have to answer to somebody, if I have to show up somewhere Saturday morning at 10 o'clock and I need to have done X, Y, Z by that time, I'm going to do it. Yeah. It's good to be on it on the, on the path with other people as well, I think it can it can help sometimes. But yeah, there is always that scheduling issue then. But uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to be introducing, as well as you know taking the master classes and making beginners guides. I'm also going to be doing accelerator courses where you know you do it as a cohort with with other people as well. So trying to offer all of those different things. The subscription thing that I've mentioned. So all of my courses have been one off payments up until now. Um, but yeah, switching to a subscription model where, you know, basically they get access to all of the courses. It didn't make sense for me when I'd only got one or two, uh, you know, and three, but now that I've got, you know, a lot of others planned. Uh, but one thing that I really liked about the subscription model from, uh, oh, the name's escaping me now. <laughs> we talked about it in our group. Um, the chap who, who basically was taking all of his courses into a subscription model, but then giving different paths through it. Um, it's Pat uh, Flynn. For Are you talking people? about Pat Flynn or Pat somebody Flynn. else? Yeah, that's the yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. And I, I love that idea because there's people who, you know, I know watch my courses or, you know, book consultations that are doing kind of different things or want different things from them. And so they're not necessarily going to want to watch, you know, every aspect of, you know, a masterclass or even a beginner's guide. It's going to be different depending on which person's doing which. So I'm definitely going to be stealing that idea from Pat Flynn in terms of, understanding what people are looking for when they come in uh, to then give them a direction and through the various other different courses that I'm going to be adding into it so I can give them a path to follow uh, for whatever it is they're trying to achieve, be it, you know, content creation or maybe it's presentations using Zoom or maybe it's online online coaching using Ecamm and Zoom and things like that. And there's various different use cases that I know people have got from my content. So, yeah, I, I just love that idea from Pat Flynn to sort of tailor it to individuals. And what's been your experiences of subscription models then for courses with, with that in mind? You know, are there any creators that you do pay for a subscription for, for their, their course content? And what's been your, your feelings on that? Well, I did buy the Pat Flynn thing. I'm, I'm in that thing. You know, his first two accelerators, I forget what they were, but they were courses that I didn't want to take. So I took the one, the pro- productivity one that's in there. But it wasn't a cohort. It was just, here's a course and take it. He's got a couple others. The one that starts next month, I think, is YouTube from scratch. But they really want you to be nobody. I mean, they, they want you to have no experience on YouTube to start that. So so I won't be doing that one. And then, but I, but again, I mean, I have access to everything he does for a year. So, And is there a community aspect with that as well? So as part of that. There you is. Know, you yeah. get the- they, they run a, they run a circle, which is kind of clumsy. Um, but that's where all the courses are hosted as well. Um, and it's good. I mean, it's I don't participate as much as I probably should. 
but I'm not in, the, in a cohort yet. I mean, if, if I got into a, if he started a, one of his courses that I wanted to pay attention to, I would get involved more, I suppose. I think the closest I've gotten to a subscription model for courses is with ship 30 for 30. After I finished the, uh, the 30 day sprint, they have a program called captain's table where they have a number of challenges that you can do, but I actually entered the captain's table when they didn't really have that set up and they were trying, I think they were trying to find their way around how were they going to deliver focused content that took you to the next part, uh, like the next level of, of problem solving, the next level of your business around, you know, writing on, uh, doing digital writing on Twitter and LinkedIn primarily. So they're sorting it out as they're going through, but what they've added are these, are these sort of sprints, like here's 10 days and here's a challenge, and this is going to help you do this thing better. And I think it's a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting model. And so you don't have to opt in for any particular challenge. So you can wait, you can be like, Oh, not a good time for me to do a 10 day sprint right now. But and you can wait for the next one, but they'll do a cycle of them so that you're going through and whenever it works for your schedule, you're paying the subscription and then you dive in and you can do it on your own on time. And I, th I think that's a really interesting way of doing it for sure. So I'm going to, I'm going to see how that goes and then see if that might work for what I want to do with, with discord coach in particular, I'm trying to figure out a, a way to deliver the learning content, but I just think it has to be a lot more handheld and it can't be asynchronous. And if it's a cohort, it's very much a project-based cohort. Like you're going to, you're going to build a server and we're going to go through all the steps together. So still not sure what that's going to look like. I like, I like that idea. Um, I'm currently going through like different, um, each month I, 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 I have, well, my goals, I created a plan to do a challenge every other month and each challenge will be a course in itself by the end of the year I should have six fully baked courses that are like 30 days long however I don't I don't necessarily want all of them to be 30 day challenges I do have like some short ones in between but as I'm building it uh, I could see where that would be beneficial doing it cohort style in the future. But, you know, like you were saying, Alec, you know, when you only had one or two courses, you know, doing the subscription model and doing the things that you're doing, you're currently doing didn't seem feasible. So I'm, I'm sort of like, you know, way back there trying to like build up my, my bank of courses and bank of things to do so that I could figure out, this the same thing so it's kind of nice being able to kind of see you guys you know run for run ahead and do all the things so now i'm like oh okay that that worked out pretty nice for you and i see how he's doing it over there and i see how pat's doing this over there and so you know i'm building my own version of that um this year and it's so far it's been it's a lot of work but at the same time once it's built it's done and it's going to be something that I hopefully will be able to um you know have like a library of things that people can either learn on their own or learn you know when it's time that is one of the yeah. nice things about courses to, to have that online stuff that you know you you just get sales that are happening you know it, it's it's just another online product that uh, can be generating revenue while you uh <laughs> while you sleep as it were so I really like them from from that point of view. Uh, the other just a quick point about courses as well is when it you know that it's all up to date information. So you can never really know. You could watch a YouTube video that may well be out of date. I know that half of my someone emailed me about an Ecamm Live video that I made nearly two years ago or eighteen months ago, or whatever. And I know that the information in it is now out of date. So having a, a course that keeps the information up to date and relevant and organised is is great. But. Well, I think there's definitely something for everyone to consider in terms of courses. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great way to monetize your content as well. And it's also a way to, you know, to, to share the information that you've got with other people. And I was on a call with somebody just yesterday who was talking about, you know, they're a bit wary about whether to do it and to put themselves out there. But if you're giving value to people, then, uh, you know, it's people's choice whether they want to take it up or not. But it's a, 
as I say, a great, a great dovetail in with content creation. Thanks for hopping on to our creator spot. If you enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you didn't like it, tell your friends. We'd love a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can check out our YouTube channel, Creator Spot. The Creator Spot is produced by C22 Media. Alex Johnson, Dina Taylor, Keely Dunn, Michelle Lawrence, Rob Valls, and me, Rich Green. Thanks. Rob. Oh, fuck. <laughs>